G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here, and I'm wearing me extra special doubled up bifocals. The Guru glasses and the Granny glasses, just to be talking to conference report. Fred, how you going? It's like this, Fred. I got a bit of a giggle out of your scam on the OASPI. It was funny, alright? But uh, I hope you don't mind if I attempt to slightly correct your impression. The OASPI as I've read it doesn't make any great claim that the word OASPI has deep meaning and significance. It makes that claim for its word for the Creator God, Jehovah, which I got to say the first time I saw one of the things and I opened it and I saw it written there, it really turned me off. But I was pretty impressed with the glossary. And let me show you the glossary, Fred. Here in the 1970 edition of the 1882 book. And the editor's preface, it says, If a book were to fall down from the sky with Jehovah's signature to it, man would not accept the book on that account. Why then should anything be said about how this book was written? It blows nobody's horn. It makes no leader. It is not a destroyer of old systems or religions. It reveals a new one adapted to this age. New York, 1882. And you have this glossary of strange words used in this book. And there's a heap of them. And one of the words that it talks about is Oaspi. Yeah? Oh, Aspie. Sky, earth, bracket, corpore, and spirit. The all, the sum of corporeal and spiritual knowledge as at present. So that's what the book says the book is about. The all, the sum of corporeal and spiritual knowledge as at present. Now the first time I saw this thing, I figured it was Midrash. That's an Aramaic word for religious science fiction. And I borrowed the book and I took it home intending to find the mistakes. I thought as a book of God theory it was nice that it had a glossary, but it's also got a publisher's synopsis. It's got an index of principal plates. It's got hints to the reader. It's got a reasonable index up at the front. I was greatly uh, bemused, not amused, bemused by this stuff by Oaspi and the voice of man at the front. And uh, all of that stuff is completely missing from the 1993 edition, which was the last edition published. It commences here at the Book of Jehovah, and it's a particularly sort of densely written religious tract. Personally, by the time I got well, I mean, yeah, 20 pages in, I pretty much gave up trying to read it. I went back to the publisher's index and started asking a few questions that way and I came to the back end of the book. And I really liked the Book of Judgment, which starts on page 773. And I've got to say that most of the stuff in the middle there I haven't paid much attention to at all whatsoever. That's just, you know, how it goes. But yeah, Book of Judgment, I like it. Okay? But one of the most important things I've found in the Oaspi Fred, it's, uh, it's a bit like in the Messiah's Handbook, the Reminders for the Advanced Soul excerpts of which appear in uh, Illusions by Richard Bach. At the end of the book, when Donald Shimoda is assassinated by the redneck evangelistic Christian, and uh, Richard finds the Messiah's handbook with its covers you know, being blown by the wind and the leaves turning over idly, he has a look at the last page, and it says on the last page, everything in this book may be wrong. Okay, so... <clears throat> As far as I can tell, all of the people who were making evangelistic 
preaching clips telling people that they should go and read the OASPI and the OASPI is the best thing since sliced bread. None of them seem to have had a look at the back end of the book. Now, up here at the back of the book, in the book of inspiration, page 821, we find something that makes it hard for me to understand why anybody says that the OASPI is the basis of any kind of a scam or a cult. Chapter 11. 1. Seek not to spread my gospels and entice followers unto this, that or the other, saith Jehovah. 2. Neither go about preaching, saying, Thus saith Jehovah. 3. Let all men hear me in their own way. 4. No man shall follow another. 5. I will have no sect. 6. I will have no creed. 7. I am not exclusive, but I am with all my living creatures. 8. To those who choose me, practising their all highest light, I am a shield and fortification against all darkness and against all evil and contention. 9. Thou shalt not establish me by man's laws nor by the government of man, saith Jehovah. 10. Nor establish by man's laws or government any book or revelation, saying, Behold, this is Jehovah's book. 11. To keep man from interfering with man, this hath been great labour. 12. To teach man to comprehend liberty especially as to thought and as to knowledge, this hath been great labour. 13. For he falleth easily under the inspiration of his surroundings and falleth under the teachings and persuasions of his brother. 14. Because he cometh from my hand into the world in innocence, a helpless infant. 15. And his elder brothers take advantage of his innocence and teach him their own knowledge instead of directing him to me. 16. And his elder brothers were in darkness themselves and their elder brothers before them. 17. I said unto man, Be free, learn to know liberty, think for thyself, study thy Creator in all things and in thyself in particular. 18. Turn thou away from thy elder brothers, come thou to the all highest fountain. 19. Be not confounded with abstruse reasonings, cut all things short, godlike, learn thou of the Creator and his creations, there is nothing more. Thou art one of the seeds of Jehovah, and wert planted by his hand. Be thou free from all the world. Okay. So, if you can tell me how that's supposed to be a scam, I will be greatly enlightened. There's no one world temple at Kobe like there is for the Mahikaris. There's no Guru Maharaj Ji licensed to fly a Boeing 707 airliner from continent to continent where he keeps a palace on each side of each continent. There's no congregation. There's just a few people around the world who've had an OASPI come into their lives and it's given them a bit of a steer in the right direction or it hasn't. I found that book at a friend's house after driving 50 miles 50 kilometres, having said in a conversation, and I'm quoting, Ah, in order to put my trust in faith, I would have to abandon reason. And I like to think I'm a reasonable person. And if ever I was to find a reasonable faith, I might consider becoming a faithist, but until then I shall try to remain a scientist. And I drove 50 kilometres and I saw this thing and I was lent it and I took it home intending to pull it to pieces and find the bullshit that was in there. And I knew there had to be bullshit because it seemed to be religious science fiction. And as I said, if I find a reasonable faith, I might become a faithist. Faith. A convinced belief. <clears throat> a condition of mind fully satisfied. Next to actual knowledge. We have faith the sun will rise tomorrow but the knowledge cannot be actual until after the sunrise. Next word down. Faith ist. One who has faith in Jehovah being over all and within all to a wise and definite purpose. One who has not faith in anything but Jehovah. One who endeavours to make themselves in unison with Jehovah by doing good unto others and in striving to put away self-gratification. A non-resistant. The opposite from Uzian. And the Uzians, Fred, are the people of the world. So, that's the Book of God Theories, which I subscribe to. 
It's big and it's thick and it's ponderous and it's bound in green leather. And it says we should be pacifists, it says we should be vegetarians. It says we should live in affiliative fraternity. It says the only true sin or Satan is selfishness. It says it's better to be non-resistant. As far as I can see, as religions go or as spiritual belief systems go, it passes the first hurdle. And the first hurdle is, first do no harm. And because it tells me not to go and preach to people, I don't. I don't tell you you have to read the book. I don't tell you you have to listen to it. I just tell you that you're barking up the wrong tree when you suggest that anybody who has faith is the intrinsic opposite of a scientist. Maybe a faithist is the opposite of a mystic, and a scientist is the opposite of a nescientist, nescience, the science of knowing not, the science of not knowing, the agnostics, the people who make an art form of sitting on the fence and saying they haven't got any evidence either which way. Nescience is opposite science. I think. But science is not opposite spiritual belief systems. Science is certainly not opposite faith. They're different measuring sticks. But yeah, you produced a humorous piss take of the OASPI. Congratulations. Even I got a laugh out of it. Ciao.